Shalom. This is Rabbi Maurice Sklar, and I want, I, w I want to welcome you uh, this evening to our Beit Rafa service. And Beit Rafa means house of healing or place of healing. And uh, I believe God's going to touch you today. And uh, we had a wonderful day yesterday, but it was... Uh, it was interrupted. I had a vision in the middle of playing, and it just turned my whole, uh, the whole day. And I, I saw the, I saw something that was was kind of, wow, it was disturbing. I was just weaving on the inside because I had, I as I was improvising, uh, you know, and just worshiping the Lord, I began to hear the cries and see i had a vision i saw millions of the aborted uh babies that had their blood was crying out from the earth and it just put the fear of god in me i said oh my gosh uh that's uh and it was going up before the throne of god and one of the things that brings judgment upon a nation that's found in the torah of course for, uh, on Israel and all nations is is uh, is the uh, the shedding of innocent blood, and we have done that by the millions since legally it's been written in the law since 19 I believe 73, so it's a it's a very serious very serious uh, situation. Anyway, I want to say hello to everybody. Yes, uh, you're coming up right now. My goodness, you come on fast. Hello, Alice Nash, and hello, Sharon Hubbard, bless you. Barb Ellis, always with us, and Rebecca, too. You know, I like that, that there's young people and there's the older generation, too, you know. God wants to reach all the generations now. Danny Duncan, bless you, sir. Good to see you. And uh, Christine Brown, good evening. And Barb, yes, Doris, will it? Hallelujah. Well, today I'm planning, uh, unless God interrupts, and He, Holy Spirit can always interrupt. If He wants something else like we did yesterday, Lord warned us, if, you know, after that vision, I couldn't hardly do anything <laughs> except just, oh, Lord. Um, these are very prophetic uh, daily uh ministries uh, that I'm doing and and I always will allow the Holy Spirit to step in if he wants to and and prophesy and very often that, that is spontaneous or gifts the spirit so that's all right but I'm determined today to continue in Romans chapter 8 because I believe uh, this is such a such an important thing we started uh, that's how I started these broadcasts. Not every day, of course, a few, a few months ago, uh, before the uh, the virus thing took took uh, precedence over everything. We were just doing that as uh, once a week or once or twice. Now it's been every day. We've gone uh, close to fifty days. Um, we're getting up to it uh, in a row, and that is I've never done that in my life. So that that's something different and new, but it was a, again, it was a command. And but God's always blesses you when you do what He asks you to. So and I'm, I've uh, in the process fallen in love with all of you. You know you can't pray for anybody without God starting to pour His love, uh, pour His love into you for the ones you're praying for. That's why it's so good. Pray for your enemies when you start praying for them. You know, especially the ones that really, I mean, people that just really rubbed you the wrong way or get you a, a, in, a, in a tizzy or cause uh, as, as, as really enemies even. You know, you won't feel that way for very long. You'll start to love them because that's what he said. Love your enemies, pray for them, and then do good. Do good to them. And they can't stay your enemies. They won't stay your enemies. It's amazing. The love of God will melt the, you know, I tell you, if you really have somebody that, that you're fighting so hard just to, every time you think about them and you've forgiven them, but you don't know what to do, okay, I'll tell you what to do. Well, this is just, just hot off the press here. This is what to do. Do what, 
Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, do good to them. Do good to them. Love them, but love them in ways like bless them. Give them something. You, uh, you know, go out of your way and make sure that it's uh, totally sincere, but do it in such a way that, that it will just absolutely, it, it, it'll, it'll turn their hearts, not only back to you, but the, first of all, back to God. And it's just, it's an amazing way of, of making friends. He says, when a man's, it says, when a man's ways or woman's ways please the Lord, even their enemies will be at peace with them. You know, and you can get to the place where they don't have anything evil to say about you, or they have to, they, you know, and, and Satan will make sure that you have enemies or people that he's lied to about you, or maybe you actually did something that, that turned them away. But do good to them. Pray for them. Do good. That's how you love. Love in ways that uh, cannot be denied, you know. Anyway, that that was for somebody. That'll break the power of that thing over you and that, that hatred, resentment, amen, anger. We're not to stay in that we have to forgive. And the best way to train your flesh to forgive is just to just do good. Do, think, think, turn it all around and say, what would I, what would, if I was that person, what, what would I love to receive? And then bless them like, Love your neighbor as yourself. And I tell you, it's amazing what God does. Gifts turn the heart if, they're, if, they're, if they have love attached, the real love of God attached. And so anyway, wow, somebody need to hear that. Well, let me say hello to a few more of you. I'm going to get into the word. And if you want, uh, turn to uh, Romans 8. And we're going to start in verse 18. We're going to continue. We've been going verse by verse through the book of Romans. Hello, Ina and Julie and Debbie. Yes, you're all my friends now. I've been every night. I pray for you between about 10 and 11. Hello, Ina. That, she's my, I call her my Baton Rouge buddy. She's my friend from Baton Rouge. Good evening. Happy to be with Bait Rafa this evening and Rabbi Maurice. Bless you. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get used to that. God said it's okay. I want you to announce it that you are, uh, and I'm giving you to them as, as a teacher, a rabbi. And since uh, I'm a Jewish believer, and that's just Hebrew for teacher. Hallelujah. But I feel a, a, I, I feel a, a, a pastor's love for you. It's amazing. I, I didn't. I thought I could get through this life without having to be a pet. You know, I don't think anybody wants starts out wanting to do that, but then God puts that in them, and it's so important. And uh, again, I have. I'm. I'm just. A lot of what we're doing is paradigm shifting. They used to call it in the business the paradigm shift. We're beginning to change the way we think, and I'm counteracting all of this. Uh, humanism and, and, and selfishness that we've just been grown up in and marinated in since we were very little children. The me generation, you know, the I want it all and I want it now. And, and the Bible is not really, it wasn't written from our generation, but we sure need, we sure need the, the godly character that it talks about. So I hope you're doing all right. I, I, you know, it's amazing. I, God, God grieves over the sin of man, but he loves fallen man. He loves the sinner. And uh, that, is, that is so important. And we need encouragement. And remember that, you know, when you hear that kind of uh, message, remember not to fall into, don't let the devil start condemning you. It, conviction's okay. But remember, you are accepted in the beloved. And God just wants us in the right place and to make sure that we are not being deceived. And we, we judge ourselves. We're going to receive communion a little bit later. Hallelujah. Who is Susie Ludwig Brothers? Okay. Bless you, Alice. Yes. 
Yeah, we're gonna look at a few. Wendell, Wendell Brock, shalom. <laughs> Barb, you are the virtuoso emoticon lady. Yeah, you have so many there. Music, you like the music? Did you like the music yesterday? It was kind of, I got into intercession and that's kind of the danger. Sometimes if I start prophesying, if I, if I just go, it used to happen to me all the time and when I do concerts, I say, well, God put something on my heart to teach, but if I start by playing, I may just take off and we can't, I can't get back. And that's, <laughs> that's been a, and that's not always bad. Sometimes God just wants to, to do something different. Yes, hello, uh, Linda writes, uh, I have to watch last night's broadcast. Yes, about halfway through it, wow. I am grateful to be able to catch up when I miss the service. Oh, I'm so glad. It's amazing how you guys are so, so faithful. You're always, and, and I believe, you know, you're hungry. And you're hungry for a balance. You're hungry for Bible truth. And we're hungry for this. I actually like salty messages. I like messages that stir me up, that have that prophetic edge, that exhort us to, uh, contend for the faith and to and to motivate us to you know sharpen us our iron sharpens iron and sharpen that sword you have hallelujah and get the get get you know God wants to train you to be a champion not not just you know just average you guys aren't average you're the best of the best that's why I believe God gave gave you to this and gave you to me in the spirit and I I take response. I pray. I pray. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're, we're together in this now. Hallelujah. And I love you. I want you to know that. All right. So let's go on now. Uh, finally, we all been looking forward to this. Uh, we are at about verse 18 in chapter eight, the great triumphant, uh, Mount Everest height <laughs> summit it's the, it's one of the summits of the scriptures and uh, it, it talks about uh, who we are and through righteousness and how we triumph through and in Messiah. Hallelujah. Now, verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Everybody say glory. <laughs> with the glory which shall be revealed where? in us. Did you know when you were born again, when Jesus moved in, he brought his glory with you and he made you brand new on the inside. And Paul repeats this over and over and over uh, that the greater one, the new man, you are now made new in Christ. You are no longer that old person that that was a slave to sin and death. You are no longer uh, uh, a servant of darkness. You are no longer a, a, a you're no longer a broken, powerless slave of Satan. No, you are now <laughs> born out. It says we've been translated out of the dominion of darkness into his marvelous light. Since that's who you are, that's who you really are. How then should we live? And we live out of that. And then the victory that Jesus won for us, then we, we, we begin to bear fruit of that and it takes over our whole life. And that's the victorious Christian walk, the victorious life in Messiah. <clears throat> but we, we, I mentioned this before, we reckon, and that's an idea of, you know, of, of calculating, but it's a legal, we, we, we declare it, we, we accept it as truth, and it's final. We, the sufferings that we go through because of opposition from the world, the flesh and the devil, God had to leave us in this body, God had to leave us in this world that at this time, is not being ruled sovereignly yet by God. He, he, and well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, God is sovereign, but he gave dominion on the earth to mankind for a period of time. Uh, just like you would lease a, 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 a house or a condominium or a piece of property to someone, 
God gave a lease of time to Adam and all of his race or our of the human being. And we committed high treason through Adam. Adam fell out of a relationship with God and he gave this authority and this lease, which is approximately for 6,000 years. Uh, I believe it is 6,000 years. We just don't know exactly when the start and the stop is. Like, if we go from Yeshua's resurrection, where we begin the, the last the, the 2,000 years or two days of the church age, uh, the third day being the coming of the Lord, or the seventh day, the Shabbat rest, a thousand year period, as I talked about, a day is a thousand years, Peter said. A thousand years as a day then if we calculate if we if we begin to say well you know maybe it is at the year at the year 2000 well that could be but what if it's from the beginning of the church which was 2033 34 you know at the death and resurrection at the outpouring of Pentecost Pentecost, hallelujah, is Shavuot. It's 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 the harvest. It, it's it, but it's 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 the outpouring of the Spirit. It was the beginning of the Holy Spirit's uh, time, the, the age of grace, the time of grace. Where are we roughly? Well, I can tell you that we are in the midnight hour prophetically. We are at the dawning of the third day of the church, and the and the uh, 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 seventh day, or the Shabbat rest, or the millennial reign, the last thousand years, where, hallelujah, uh, we, will, we will see perfection on earth. Jesus is coming, and he's going to, we, Satan will be locked away in a, in a pit, and you'll see all sorrow and suffering and crying and pain and sickness and poverty and war and all these things, earthquakes and disasters, they will be no more. Why? <coughs> because they come from, not from God, they come from Satan. And Satan has a temporary rule because God gave free will to man. But we're in the end of that time. And so... And I'm going to do my best to stick with this now because I could start preaching about anything. I'll end up start talking about the coming of the Lord and the end times. Y'all have to pray for me. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, though, we need this revelation so we can stand in victory. But we don't, we, we know there's a glory in us which shall be revealed. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means uh, the primary meaning of this is that Hallelujah. We, we, one day, we will be the total manifested sons and daughters of God, and we will, we will be changed. We will receive our resurrection body, and we will, the glory that's within us will totally take over not only all of our lives, but all of creation. And that's later in the chapter, in just a few more verses, uh, Paul starts talking about uh, creation groaning and creation suffering with man waiting for this day that comes this day is the redemption the 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 fullness of the victory that Jesus wrought when he rose again from the dead when he comes as the son of David to reign as Messiah forever hallelujah in the new Jerusalem and in the Jerusalem the the Jerusalem, uh, the earthly Jerusalem as well. Hallelujah. The city of David. He will reign on the throne of David. <laughs> so that's the, one of the meanings. But there's a further meaning. And that is, he's actually referring, and in the context of chapters 5 through 8, he's talking about the resurrection power or the glory that's in you to be manifest in this mortal body. In other words, God wants that glory to come out of you now. But in order to do that, it's war. You, in order for God's manifested glory to be, uh, to be uh, experienced through us, that's, that it's in us, then we have to 
we have to battle the world, the flesh, and the devil, and we that's our warfare. That's a fight of faith. It's a fight of faith. It's a good fight because we win, but it is believing even when we are suffering. And so one of the I think one of the greatest ways we suffer as believers is having to experience the infirmity of our flesh and the persecution of uh, Satan and uh, most of all just living in this world that is groaning and travail and 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 just just uh, we're in such we feel it we feel all of creation is just is moaning and groaning oh you know you you can feel it that in if you're sensitive at all you know people talk about vibrations and eastern and that's a bunch of hooey i think except there are vibrations there are sometimes some of those new age people know and and whatever they call them you know and some of the hindus and the buddhists and the, they sit and meditate sometimes they're more sensitive to the spirit realm than a lot of believers even though they're there, when you get in the spirit realm, there's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. The only safe way to live in the spirit realm is to be covered with the blood and in the blood. It just absolutely, you stay under and in Yeshua always. And then, hallelujah, we have authority. The name of Jesus has all authority in the spirit realm and uh he said, you will tread upon serpents and scorpions. Jesus said that all the demonic uh, war machine that is in the spirit realm coming against us and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You'll trample on them. Hallelujah. But anyway, so there is so much, the glory is so much greater than this, this little, it's actually much smaller than it seems, but we just feel it. And most of us are so feeling driven. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. We, oh, I feel this way and I feel that way. Well, it really, most of the time, almost all the time, your feelings are lying to you. It's the voice of the body, you're feeling. I don't feel like going on the broadcast today. <laughs> I don't want, you know, not tonight, dear, I have a headache. Oh dear, well. Never mind. See, feelings, if you are led around by how you feel at the moment, first of all, it's going to change. And secondly, you won't get anything done because the devil and your body will put you in a place where you... you, you and, and then, and then one, if you don't get up and overcome every day, you have to overcome the feelings and the, all that junk and stuff uh, uh, that negative and, and pulling you down. It's like gravity holding you to the ground. You just wait like, ah, oh. well, you have to, you have, by the glory of God, you have to learn how to live, live over that. And then you break through just like gravity, you know, just like an airplane or, or a rocket, a rocket, a rocket. It takes enormous effort, especially right at first to get it, to get out of the natural into the spirit realm or get into the upper atmosphere, then there's not as much resistance. It's exactly like that with this body. You have to start in the flesh with a decision of your will, and then you begin to press. And, and sometimes it takes enormous effort. Now in heaven, you won't have that. You'll start worshiping God and it's just ecstasy. There's no resistance. It's like, oh, you feel it. And when you feel it, boy, that done, when you, you know, I love it when I feel the anointing. But even when I don't feel the anointing, I know it's there. Why? Because I'm, I believe God's word. I've reckoned something. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, that resistance, is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And if you press through, even in this body, the glory will be revealed in you every single day. And that's what God wants. And that is, that is a fight, isn't it? But it's worth it. Hallelujah. You can always break through. God wants you to break through. By God's grace, I received a special 
uh, and it was, I know where it came from. It came from Sweden in the early 90s. And, uh, there was a church called Word of Life, and they had what, I mean, every service would always break through. There was a breakthrough anointing. I think it came, a lot of it came out of Dr. Summerall's ministry. In other words, you don't back up, you keep going, and every service, I always break through by God's grace. Why? Because... The glory that's in us, I, I've already reckoned it to be greater. And by the end of this service, you are going to receive and you'll be different than when you tuned in. You're going to lift off, you're going to make it, and the rocket's going to take off whether the devil likes it or not. <laughs> Amen. That's a declaration of faith. All right? So, <coughs> there is a... He is the breaker. He has a breakthrough anointing. And God wants you to break through into this realm where victory is. See, God's already answered. God's already done everything. He's already answered through the new covenant every need and desire. I mean, he has it for you. The war is you breaking through the 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 dark, this dark realm. There's like a a realm around the earth is darkness and it's there's 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 a demonic host that are resisting you getting connected to the glory of God that is over that border okay so when we pray especially when we pray in the spirit and lord willing tomorrow and if not tomorrow well no i'm i'm determined i'm going to teach on how to be filled with the spirit and I'm going to show you how easy it is. And you're going to receive your prayer language. Hallelujah. And you are going to just take off like a rocket ship. But it, think of a rocket. Now that's the spiritual life. And that's a picture of that's a picture of this verse, really. There's so much power in you. And we just have to focus it. And it's, it's directly connected to your will. Do you desire, do you desire that victory? And you have to first have hope that, well, I could actually live in it. And every once in a while we break through and we go, we experience that wonderful place. And, you know, where, and I can tell you, this victory realm is here and we've got to. We've got to break through as the body of Messiah, as the bride. We have to wake up and we have to break through. And that's why I'm doing this every day. I am on your case. I know I'm on your case. I'm, I mean, I, God's put a fire under, under me and under you because I have a divine dissatisfaction right now. I'm not satisfied where I'm at right now because I know. I know that glory is in me. And it keeps saying, help, I want you, I want you to help the dear ones break through, really break through to where they don't, don't just have every once in a while a good day. No, every day is a day of victory. Every day, every day you can triumph. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Messiah. Well, how do we triumph? We triumph when God's will is done and we break through and we have to defeat the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. It's nothing new, you know, in the, that sense. We all know about it. But I tell you what, without being encouraged daily right now, the Antichrist spirit is so, the undertow. Well, why even try? It's hopeless. It's useless. No, that's a lie. And I'm telling you, no, you've got to break the, get to the outer atmosphere. Just keep, keep just, the, the rocket is shaking, you know, and it, it's pulling and, but it keeps going up. And once that, once you break through the barrier, hallelujah, that's where the goodies are. That's where heaven is. And God says, get up there and bring, and then bring heaven back with you and help others so they can break through. That's my job. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to do. For you, you are destined 
destined to break through. All right, now let's look at verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Well, that's Elizabethan English, but it actually, if you, the, the words are very fine, and once you understand what, what he's talking about, it's just, it's this image, I, I see thing in an image. If you meditate long, the word long enough, you start getting images. Okay, so it's saying here, not only <coughs> you, but all of creation, all of creation fell. And the curse came upon the earth. But Jesus bore the curse and broke it. And you don't have to live under the curse anymore. The blessing of God is greater. And he says here, not only you, but the all of creation, even at the atomic, subatomic level, everything's moving. Uh, Mr. Tesla talks about the, the every frequency and others that, that understand uh, everything's being held together by the word of God, which is Je Jesus actually holds the atoms together. There's a lot of space. Most of most of matter is actually empty space. It, there's just a tiny little nucleus, <laughs> tiny little nucleus. I mean, really tiny, and then a whole lot of space, and then the the electrons going around. But what's holding all of it together? It's held together by God's word. Hallelujah. But it says that the the that all of creation has a yearning, has a longing, has an earnest expectation or a um, almost a desperate desire, a, a, a intense. All of creation is yearning and groaning for the time when evil and the curse will be gone forever. See, God never created the universe and, and the earth and, and the animals. He didn't create the animals to kill each other. He didn't, he didn't create, uh, uh, he, did, he never, death was never a part of God's original, original uh, uh, design in the plant kingdom, animal kingdom. There was no death. And if you go to the planet heaven, it looks like a planet, at least what I saw. It's very similar to earth, except everything is alive, 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 alive forevermore. There's a place, there's a place of victory. But you can go there in the spirit. You can actually live in that place now. Well, how do you do it? Well, tomorrow I'm going to talk about the, the entrance way into the spirit realm of, of their, this ex wonderful experience, immersion, immersion in, in uh, the, the filling, like uh, filling a tire up or filling a balloon, that's a better, like a hot air. God wants to fill you with, with the Holy Spirit so you can begin to soar. You know, I was listening uh, yesterday, I was having a little lunch and sometimes I'd turn on the TV, Christian TV, I got so tired of hearing about you know, looking at all the masks and everybody fussing and fuming over the the virus and, and this and that and the economy. So I turned over to the TVN and you know who was on? T.D. Jakes. And my God, that that man, I mean, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't know much about him, but one thing he can do is preach. And he knows how to build and build and build and build and build. And he's talking about eagles soaring and they make love in the air, you know, and they're <laughs> I didn't know that, but did you know uh, when eagles mate, they they are actually mating while they're soaring, and and they're, they're just, it's like a very amazing thing he was talking about. But but there was what I love is that somehow God has gifted him and others to to break through into the glory realm. There's a place called the glory zone, if you will, or the, the place where you can live. See, we, most, of the, most of the body of Messiah doesn't know about the glory of God. They don't understand. They, 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 they hear about it. They, they, they think they know. But, but we've got to actually 
really break through. And that's where the real war is. That's the real battle. The real battle is for you to break through this thin layer of darkness that is full of Satan's war machine, that's this band of, of hell that they're, and that, you know, and they're, and they're just, just, they're, they, they resist you if you get close and you break the ceiling. If you break the ceiling spiritually of your life, that's when, that's where the miracles are. That's where, but then you will see, see, the real war we have isn't with people. And it is, certainly isn't with, you know, your mate or, you know, no, what's going on is if you are pressing in and you're starting to break through, uh, Satan will resist you. How is the number one way he resists me? Emotional storms. That's what I call them. Emotional storms. What do I mean? I mean, just you're sitting there and you're in bed with your beloved and, and there's something just irritating the fire out of you that, you know, she, she or he did or didn't do. And why am I so upset at that? Well, the enemy is stirring up your flesh and magnifying something and screaming at you in the spirit realm and pressure, that pressure, that emotional pressure that comes ah! and tries to get you to react mostly to say something. If he can get you to say something in anger, uh, and that, that's why you have to repent over your words. Every day I put them under the blood. I want to show you how to do that as time goes on too. I will not rest content until you are bearing more fruit than I am. Then I'll be happy. You better do better than me. I want you to break through your ceiling. It's not a glass ceiling. It's a devil ceiling. It's a, it's a flesh. It's, it's the amount that you... See, the less you compromise the more of a weapon you are. You're a weapon of righteousness. You become very sharp and you start pressing through this thing. And see, then the devil starts getting tormented. The demons and hosts that are assigned to you from, from God are fighting for you, of course, the angels, but there is also a well-organized uh, uh, strategy to take you out. Well, how do you overcome that? Well, you can put a constant pressure on him with God's word, with uh, staying in love, and and majoring on. See, all of this stuff. Don't do this. Don't do that. Or you know, stay in the light. You know, all that stuff isn't so. You God just wants you to be miserable and have no fun. No, it's so that you can break through. Hallelujah. And when you break through, you go, oh, oh my God, I didn't realize how important it was. You see? All right. Wow. So, all of creation is waiting for this manifestation of the sons of God. I believe there are two manifestations primarily of the sons of God. The first one is upon us right now. It's when there's going to be a period of time when the overcoming church, uh, who the Lord always refers to uh, when he has spoken to me and does uh, as his bride, or the, the, there, there's this army of the Lord rising up right now. And for a period of time, it's going to be unlike any other time in her church history that we're in right now. I believe that. And for a time we're going to see we're going to see uh, uh, the manifestation of this resurrection glory and power upon the earth this is one of the things that William Branham prophesied about when he was uh, you know and I believe he saw correctly and many others talk about this end time uh, uh, army of the Lord that actually breaks through and brings heaven to earth and harvests, fulfills the great commission. So that's, so creation's longing for that. When you break through, everybody breaks through. See, 
it's not just me. We're part of a body, an organism, if you will. We're millions of us that when we awaken, when we, prayers like uh, Jesus said, Lord, make us, Father, make us one, John 17. Well, that's a big prayer. Well, God's doing that. The light and the darkness are starting to congeal on each side. I mean, it's so clear now. I, I could look at somebody for 20 seconds and tell whether they're born again on the TV, just looking at them. Well, how do you do that? Well, light. Is someone in the light or in the darkness? Well, listen to what they say. What is their foundation? All you have to do is listen to somebody. In five minutes, you know exactly what their heart is full of. You know, it's not hard to discern. <laughs> Just listen. Listen what's coming out of their mouth. Whatever you're full of in your heart, that's what comes out of your mouth. That's why we want to get God's word in our mouth all the time. All right, so... There's an expectation. There is a, cli there, there is a climax to creation in history. And we are, we are there. We are there. This is it. Okay. Uh, but the ultimate the, the, and the primary meaning of this verse, the full manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, come, uh, come when, hallelujah, Behold, I tell you, I show you a mystery. <laughs> we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. See, there is a redemption for creation. That redemption is, is, is total. It's not just, well, first it has come in our spirits, those that are born again, but soon, it's going to come into all of creation and it will be just like it never fell. And then for a thousand years, there's going to be a renovation, <laughs> period. We got to get rid of all the sin and death and the wicked. The wicked will be removed and incarcerated. The evil, devils and men, those that refuse, those that are not his people must be incarcerated. They will be incarcerated under the earth in a place called hell. It's under the earth, but it's in the spirit realm. I don't understand that. Well, I don't fully understand it either, but I've been there and I've seen it. So I've been, it's in the spirit realm. This is this other dimension. I mean, even the science fiction people have been pressing the envelope, you know, other dimension, and then quantum physics and there are other dimensions. And science will be the first to tell you that our physical senses only pick up a small spectrum of light or sound, or we, we, we're very limited in our, what we perceive. There's a whole, there's a whole lot more. We, we function on three dimensions in our natural humanity, but actually we function on four. They're, they used to call it a sixth sense or a, actually what it is is when, and you can safely enter into the spirit realm and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are how God helps us to perceive things. Our, our, our inner man, our spirit man <clears throat> has senses, okay? I know that sounds strange, but uh, there are spiritual eyes, there's ears, there's, there's, there's per perception, there is, there, uh, there is uh, smelling, spiritual the, the, we have no, we we can smell. I uh, one one of these services we had, I smell I uh, smelled the fragrance after some worship. I can't remember exactly. I smelled roses, and right now we have so many roses. Oh my goodness! In our house and in the yards, because we just had a rose explosion about a week ago. <laughs> All the roses just started blooming, but uh, in, in our backyard. But the the. the the thing is that there's a fragrance. I and every once I've only, maybe I've only, I could maybe count on two hands, one or two hands of the times I felt. I it's like I was in the garden of the Lord. I would sometimes smell it in uh, in uh, services uh, in the early days with Pastor Benny. I'd smell this. Oh, what is that? It's it's a bouquet. It's it's a beautiful. And and many times in the early part of the of the 
charismatic movement in the early 70s, there was a lot of, because the worship was so beautiful and it, there was a fragrance that went up. Our worship is like a fragrance, but there's spiritual senses. Hallelujah. There's touch, spiritual touch. You can, and, and, and that's why, you know, it's like if, it, even a small child or a dog even has some sort of, uh, an animal sometimes can be more spiritually perceptive. Uh, but there are, say, if there's a, a you ever, ever been somewhere and, or you just in a room and it was a dark and stormy night, and, you know, and, and suddenly I felt a presence of something, you know, cold and clammy. And well, that's very likely uh, a demonic, uh, demonic spirit. And, uh, and you can, you know, I mean, God, if God opens your eyes, you can actually see it. And I tell you, one, if that happens to you, you'll say, please, Lord, turn it off. I don't want to see. They're so hideous. But the angels are so beautiful. And they're more with us than with them. That's why, hallelujah, stay in the light. Don't get in the twilight zone. This is dangerous. A lot of witchcraft right now. Tremendous amount of the ruling. Yes, sir. The Yeah. The, right now, the, the strongest demonic spirit over America is Jezebel. It's still there, but it's being shaken, and the intercessors are unseating many of these. Uh, some have already fallen. Some are still yet to. But that one, the witchcraft over America, I believe the spirit of Jezebel the principality, it's, it's not a person, but it is, it is, a, there's an actual principality. Uh, another one is money, mammon. That one has not fallen. It's still on the throne over the financial district in New York. I saw it once. It looked like, it looked like, um, closest thing I could describe is like Jabba the Hutt. You know, this hideous, it looked like this massive puke thing that, oh, it was just, uh, but then, but then it would transform into the most, like, handsome prince in a th suit, you know, and then it would go back to this hideous creature. Then it would transform, and it would, it just do that, and I, and it was wow. But so these things are there. Will we unseat them completely? Um, that's a good question. I believe that there. Uh, I believe that there is going to be. You know, there's a, a revelation about the seven mountains that of influence, and I, I uh, partially believe there's going to be victory enough at least to get the harvest in. I know that um, some of these will not fall until deep into the tribulation judgments, but some will. And it'll be progressive. Every time there's a shaking, an idol gets smashed. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to get... All right, here we go. Let's go on to verse 20 here. You're pulling so strong on that realm, it's hard for me to stay teaching. So just let's, let's, let's try to get through, <laughs> through some of these. I, I can see now that uh, that's why it takes me so long, but I'm determined. I'm determined. For the creature, okay, we're a creature, right? We are a creation of God. But really, this is referring to in the Greek creation, all of, all of the universe, the, the natural world, matter, creation. For the creation was made subject to vanity, or uh, it was made, uh, it was emptiness, uh, or... Uh, the very first words in the Bible, uh, the creation, something happened to it, for the earth was without form and void, chaos reigned. Or uh, what happened was uh, spiritual death reigned. And uh, something happened before Adam, we don't know what it was, in creation. that Because God doesn't create anything that's chaos and confusion and empty and vain and 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 in other words it was corrupted it was 
Karamosoyevish, Vora Nohis, Yahrunara Saya, the Riki Shaya. It was May, it was, it had substance. It was filled. See, creation was filled with the heavenly substance of he the heaven. Heaven, the atmosphere of heaven, which is a substance of life. It was removed and it created, it created, uh, uh, the fall of Adam was far greater than uh, just, just, uh, you know, they're going to have to farm and sweat, you know, or, and, and, and work. No, it, it, it had to, it, it was the invasion of death into creation, which created a, 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 a void as well. It, 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 God cannot exist where sin is reigning. Wow. Anyway, there you go. And I don't know what, what it is exactly. I pray in tongues and then God will give me the revelation. So you have to read the Bible by revelation. You need the Holy Spirit. To understand the Bible. Remember when you were born again, how the Bible suddenly made sense before it didn't make any sense? Well, it's a supernatural book, isn't it? So the the creation uh, fell, and it was it didn't do so willingly. It was forced to because Adam had dominion over the universe, and his dominion stretched all the way to the very throne of God. That's because he was made, he was made like God. He was to be a being like God, to fellowship. A son and daughter is of the same kind. But we're now born again, just like the resurrected Yeshua, even better than what Adam was before the fall. They won't teach you that in most uh, Christian uh, Sunday schools or whatever, you know, at the first church of the Frigidaire. They know they won't. They won't, but this is what the Bible talks about. But it was subjected for a time to vanity or uh, uh, chaos and meaninglessness and, and uh, uh, you know, satanic uh, control and dominion. It was forced by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Now, when Jesus, when Jesus rose again from the dead, he broke the power of death over, spiritual death, separation from God over the whole universe. However, until the time, until the time of Satan's incarceration and then his being thrown permanently into the lake of fire forever, he still is the God of this world or world system or natural order of the universe with a small g because, because that's why the stars have power. Did you know that? <laughs> the stars and the planets and the, they, 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 have, they have authority in the, uh, over the affairs of men to a limited degree. And that's what a lot of this astrology and witchcraft is to try to harness their, they were created to bless mankind. So the power of blessing and cursing is actually uh, anchored into creation right now. Uh, the, in the second heavens, which is the place of above uh, or over the earth or around the earth or in this natural universe there are in this see the spirit realm is also within is there it's there's just another dimension so there is there are thrones and dominions and powers jesus did break their power over the church he gave power to the church and we can bind those but we cannot unseat them entirely until until the moment of glorification, the end of Adam's lease. So there, there are demonic fallen angels, some of which are chained in, in hell already, a few, uh, but many are still uh, ruling uh, in, in the second heavens. So this band, if you will, 
our prayers have to, we go through spiritual warfare they go to heaven god answers and he sends he sends the answer from from heaven but we have to stand in faith so they get through the see so they get through that that area that band of warfare that we that we uh, are still because there are those that want them there Anyway, I, I don't know why I'm talking about that so much right now. But. So the creation itself, when Jesus, uh, he's, it, Adam subjected it to this, but it's only temporary. That's why there's hope. <laughs> and he's trying to talk about the redemption of creation here. That's what Paul was talking about. Because the creature, we are the greatest creation of the universe. The, the earth, man is the crown of creation, mankind. <gasps> All right, because that's why it says the creature or creation. Because uh, we, the creature itself, creation itself also shall be delivered from, now here's another uh, way of saying it, the bondage of corruption. That's a very good description. Into the glorious liberty of, of the children of God. All right, we've been delivered into the glorious liberty of the resurrection power, and we have that inside of us. And where we have dominion, we have a limited dominion on the earth, in our home, in our family, in our in our sphere of influence, and uh, and in our ministries as God gives them. So we have so. So the kingdom of God has come in, in that way. Wherever, wherever the sons and daughters of God are, particularly if they're manifesting this glory, it, it has a geographical uh, influence. And that's why the more you get the sin and compromise out of your life, the more of God can manifest in to, uh, Oral Roberts called it your world. Go into your world with the good news. And that's why, that's why we have to get rid of all the weights and the sins so we can run our race. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, creation is a servant to man. God made it that way when he gave it to Adam. You have dominion. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take the blessing and the crown of glory that's on you and subdue rule the universe all right well it got the bondage of corruption that crown <clears throat> was of dominion satan took it and then he began to rule through sin and death but jesus took that crown away and gave it back to the to the uh, church and we have all power and authority in the name of jesus and so we have to we have to take dominion in our lives <laughs> so we this and eventually he said all creation will be delivered out of this corruption this temporary bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god so what's inside of you has to get out and that's where the war is for we know now, when he says we know, hallelujah, we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. You know, sometimes I've, I've uh, interceded, not all, always, but sometimes I will start to groan. I, 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 oh, God. And, and the Holy Spirit will start groaning. Uh, it's It's... It's later in the chapter we start learning how the Holy Spirit groans in the same frequency to deliver, uh, deliver not only people that are lost, but even even the 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 curse to break the curse off, to break the to break this separation, and and there's a groaning and. Uh, it's a very real, uh, it's a frequency. And sometimes uh, it, the Holy Spirit will have you travail. <clears throat> it's like giving birth. 
<coughs> out of the pain of childbirth comes and uh, another image that is coming up in uh, about the creation being pregnant with with the new heavens and the new earth this universe is pregnant and will give birth but it will come through uh, birth pangs just like a woman uh, so we are in that time prophetically of birth pangs where this old shall put will put off the old uh, God says that all creation eventually will be he says as a scroll the father will just roll it up or as a, a clothing he's just going to take it off and then he's going to create new heavens new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness <laughs> so <clears throat> now not on, now verse 23 all creation is groaning because of the fall uh, uh, verse 23 says and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit well that's especially in the context of where we are now he's been talking about how we have received the spiritual birth we are the first fruits of the harvest of the new creation okay and many more will follow god always has a first fruits and they he presents them as an offering that's happened in the early church. Many in the early church were martyred. But why? They were poured out, and their seed, the seeds planted produced the millions and millions that are here now. That's a mystery. I don't understand that fully. But uh, <clears throat> there is... Uh, God somehow uses, uh, uses our sacrifices to bring bring uh, the kingdom of God forward and you have to be very careful with that because uh, first of all I don't believe that our suffering is redemptive in the sense of of uh, everything everything Jesus was the Redeemer he's the one his suffering his cross brought out brought forth our redemption and all of creation however we enter into the fellowship of his sufferings and there's a mystery there because God uses everything for our good, which is where we're headed to. And, I, I, but, and I'm not going to finish chapter 8 before I tell you how to get baptized in the Spirit, though. I got to get, I got, you, God wants you to have your prayer language. And tomorrow, Lord willing, I'm going to, we're going to, we're almost getting to a unhitching spot here or a stopping place. You don't really stop with this. You just sort of unhook and then you rehook. So, all right. Now, well, let's look at verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit. Or we have the very, the very first thing God recreated was the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus was the first one to be born again. In hell, he... He, he received, he, he died. He died spiritually. He died physically. He was separated from God and then bore, bore the penalty, eternal damnation for, for everyone, everyone who would receive him. Hallelujah. It's not God's will that any perish, but all come to repentance. But you see, Adam had so much authority and that there's never been another creation. So when he fell, it took all of creation with him. And Jesus is the redeemer of all creation. But we, he received the first fruits of the spirit. And then he's the firstborn among many brethren. He rose from the dead. And then, and then many, many, many receive the new birth, then we become new creations. That is the first fruits of the redemption of creation. Okay, that's what he's talking about here. Didn't know quantum phys physics and science was in the Bible? Well, there it is. All I can see when I read these verses, I see the universe. You know, bum, ba -da, da, 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 da. it's not going to be barren anymore. It's not just the earth. I believe 
very likely God made all those planets and this vast universe out there for for us to inhabit and, and make it into the Garden of Eden. Sure. See? I don't think there's aliens out there. No, I don't. I think man was given dominion of the universe. <laughs> All right. We ourselves have this first fruits. And so we ourselves also, you could put also there, we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting see all creation is waiting for this moment hallelujah when death see death is the last enemy death is the last enemy jesus took the sting out of death for for those who are born again but death still still must be put under the feet of the body of messiah and so physical death will be the last thing that will be removed and will not be removed completely until after the millennial reign. We're going to have those that survive the tribulation and believe and are redeemed. You know, by the way, let me talk about this rapture thing for a minute. And that way, that way you don't have to fuss and fume and fight anymore. Okay? There's, there's a catching away three different, different times. One is in the beginning of the tribulation. One is in the middle. <laughs> and one is those that alive and remain at the end. And those will be the ones that, so those will be the ones that will inhabit, natural people will inhabit the earth during the thousand year millennial reign and they'll have children they'll live it says in isaiah that they'll a uh, hundred years old would be like a child very young they will live in their natural bodies reproduce and will still be still have to go through a final test when satan will be released at the end of that that's in the book of revelation but so there's instead of thinking of catching away if that you know that is in the bible rapture means that word is a Latin word. It's not in the original uh, scriptures. However, there's this, it's the bodily catching away of, of uh, heart. It's a heart, souls, harvest of souls. So there's, there's three different times. There's only one uh, open rapture in the book of Revelation, and that's the two witnesses. They actually ascend, they come back to life after three days, and God says, come up here, and they actually, in front of the whole world, watching on their screens, they will ascend into heaven after dying, and then, yeah, that's what a rapture is. Enoch, that happened to Enoch. Then it, he didn't die. He was not. He just, God took him, took him. He just... Uh, and that's a mystery, and that has, and I, I have a teaching actually in, in my book, uh, not too far from now, uh, the the Revelation of the Midnight Hour, the seven raptures of the first resurrection. If you, the first resurrection, anyway, I don't have time to get into that, but there is a pre-trib catching away. There is a mid-tribulation harvest and somehow it's the harvest of the uh it's the harvest of the tribulation ministers probably the 144,000 and they are suddenly before God with multitudes in heaven and uh some people call that the man child there's different interpretations but but somehow they get from earth to heaven how we don't know it's a hidden one. So there's two hidden between Revelation 3 and 4. There's a very clear division in the book of Revelation. Church is never mentioned again. It, only Israel is mentioned. It doesn't say, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying to the churches. That's what Jesus said to the seven churches. And then, and then the church is not mentioned again. It's not there. So... 
you have to notice that. I mean, you can't ignore that, okay? But then there is a, a then there is this mysterious. Maybe someday I'll teach on the Book of Revelation. Uh, there's this mysterious uh, these harvests that they just wind up in heaven. There they are. And so, and then there's definitely a harvest at the end because. Uh, of these these uh, natural these these that last through there'll be no curse no evil so there'll be no temptation nevertheless the law will go forth from Zion in other words it will be the uh, it will be the uh, Torah for a thousand years will rule Jesus as the Messiah will rule in a restored Israel uh, and will the commonwealth of nations will be directly uh, attached to the kingdom of Israel. Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? No, not yet. You preach the gospel, bring in, bring in the church is the mystery hidden in God. So anyway, so the God, there is a right way to discern <laughs> the end times. Oh, yes. And you can be totally at peace and know it's going to be all right. Now, that doesn't mean we know everything, but the Bible is consistent and it's clear if you take a literal interpretation. If you start allegorizing and say, well, that's symbolic, it really means this and doesn't mean what it, the Bible says it means, then you get into trouble with end times prophecy because you don't know what's real and what's symbolic anymore. And then you're in a, a sea of confusion. You never know. Well, it could be. A, well, it might mean this, though. Or, no, maybe it means it. And you know what? It's not subject to human nature. You need the Holy Spirit to help you. You have to rightly divide. But there's hope. This is what I was trying to say. It's being, even all creation will be redeemed. That's what I'm trying to get to. How did I get over in that? Somebody. All right. And he, that, all right, so here we go. Uh, verse 24. No, where, where am I? Where am I? See, if you were in front of me, you say, oh, verse 23. Okay, okay. Not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown, that's where I was, within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. Okay, the adoption is not only the Gentile nations being adopted into the family of God, it's the, uh, it's the fullness of the family coming in, the sons and daughters receiving their inheritance, coming into the family. God adopts the Gentile nations and he saves Israel. He, he restores what has been stolen in the firstborn, okay? So, adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. That's what he's, that is the goal right here. We're gonna stop here for now. Uh, uh, but uh, that he says there's this moment where our bodies will be redeemed. And that in the Bible, if you really wanna use a biblical term instead of saying rapture or, uh, uh, you know, second coming or uh, the end of time, well, that's fine. But really, uh, John in the book of Revelation calls it the first resurrection. It's the bringing, the bringing of the dead in Messiah to life, then those that alive and remain. That is the first resurrection. The first resurrection, see, the, the, the unrighteous will appear those that never receive salvation, they will die and go to a temporary place called hell, which is like the county jail. It's a jail. It's a, it, it, it's a horrible place. It's there. If you, separation from God. It's a place of incarceration for rebellious spirits and souls, those that, souls that have never surrendered to God. God cannot allow them to be free. They are wicked. Now, I don't understand that, but that's what the Bible says. I don't understand. 
See, our humanism jumps up right there. It goes, ah, no, no. You know, well, if God says they're wicked, then they're wicked. He's the most merciful being there is. So anyway, so there's a, a then this thousand year period, the seventh day, this beautiful time of the kingdom of God coming to earth and the restoration, the messianic kingdom, okay? That's why some of us in the body are called to proclaim Israel. That's why I wear a yarmulke. It's not to be religious. I'm, I'm not a very good religious Jew. I'm really not. You, you uh, probably better Jews than I am, almost everybody. I'm not, I'm, you know. No, I wear it as a prophetic sign because God asked me to. He said to honor the faith of your fathers and to be a prophetic sign to the church when you minister. Just that's all he's talking about. So that that to let the church know I am not done with Israel, and so all the promises to in the Bible to natural Israel must be fulfilled concerning the uh, uh, whole end of Isaiah and all all of those things. So God has a natural fulfillment. He promised Abraham and his family these things and they're eternal now exactly how in the uh new it, after that thousand years though this is what i was trying to say after that thousand years uh, uh the dead will rise first it says and that's in this first resurrection before the millennial kingdom there's coming a resurrection uh the first resurrection and all those that uh all those that believe and are saved shall receive their resurrected bodies. That's why this is so important. You see, the fullness of our redemption uh, must include our new bodies. Hallelujah. You're getting a new body. Hallelujah. And that's, that was actually... Believe it or not, that's the focus of these verses right here. It's all tied to the redemption of our bodies. So the glory in you will be seen in its fullness. We'll have a body that, just like Jesus, that will never die, will never sin, and will never and 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 can contain the fullness of the glory. Right now we can't. I mean. If God turns out the power some, we're in a service and people fall out. Have you ever seen them fall out under the power? Some people say slain in the spirit. No, slain in the spirit. <laughs> slain in the spirit would be like uh, Ananias and Sapphira. They were slain in the spirit. They uh, they died. You know, no. It, you When you fall under the power of God, these bodies can't contain. If the power's too much power, we just... We just, something has to give, you know. So, but God says the mystery is Christ in you or this resurrection power in these jars of clay. And God's going to do a miracle in our time and we're going to see more of that glory pouring through us right now in the next however, season, uh, this great grand finale than we've ever seen in church history. Hallelujah. That's going to be good. Not just a few of us, but we're all, all of us. And God is activating that now. But anyway, so then after this uh, seventh day, there's something in the Bible called the great white throne judgment. That is the time when the dead, the, the, those that did not believe, the unrighteous, will all stand one by one from all. Adam to uh, the present, all, all the way through to that time, will stand and be judged by the Father and by uh, the heavenly, uh, uh, the, the, if you will, the heavenly Sanhedrin. Or the there's going to there's a great court. There's a great court in heaven. Oh my! Uh, and uh, you know and. And God will, he said, everyone shall be judged according to what? The law, the Torah, the law, which is eternal. And according to their deeds. 
and those that are not covered or found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. That's the final judgment. So all of these things must take place. But as far as don't try so much to do a chronological order, although there is one, but understand that there are different harvests that come at different times. And, and, these, and we are coming up into that. The most important thing is that you be ready. Hallelujah. And, and that you have, you know, Jesus is Lord and you've sold out and you're completely, you have given yourself completely to him. Don't play around with sin. That's the main thing. That's all you really need to know. Just stay right. <laughs> get right or get left. <laughs> I used to say that. All right. So that's plenty for today. And we're going to go on. The redemption of our body is a wonderful study. Uh, you have to learn... You, 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 you have to see, you have to look and study so you understand it. And then, and then you won't be fooled by all kinds of crazy emotional ideas of the end times. Mm -hmm. All right. So it goes on with, we are saved by hope. So we're going to, Help me, Lord, remember. Verse 24. All right. So tomorrow we'll, we'll do... We'll, uh, tomorrow, Lord willing, I'm going to teach on... Uh, uh, teach on the how to be filled with the Spirit because God wants you to operate in the supernatural and, and receive the fullness. And it's not hard. It's easy. It's not difficult. And you're, you're going... It's going to happen to you. So I just, I just know it. All right. Oh, yes. Well, we do want to receive communion. And you know what? I, I've been I saying it's a habit. I realize now because of all the years I've been in church. Oh, I have to limit the time. Oh, I have to. But I don't. I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do. We're going to receive communion and take our spiritual vitamins today receive the offering and uh, we're going to do that now so I, I he said to start with teaching so you get to it <laughs> so we were able that's one of the most uh, deep passages right there and and I, it just takes time you can't you can't rush those you can't gloss over it, 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 it the whole universe is in chapter 8 I hope you got something out of that. Praise the Lord. Yes, I do have a special message in the sense of God gave me a prophetic message to prepare the bride and for the end times. But we need, we need good uh, verse by verse online verse by verse, just solid, balanced teaching. And, uh, you know, and unfortunately, you just can't rush it. You, you know, we have this idea that it has to be fast and easy and uh, not, uh, not too much effort. And then, okay, oh, it's not too hard. I'll, I'll. But those of you that really want a foundation to stand in the midnight hour, you're the ones. God, so we dig deep. It says, if you want your house to stand in the storm, you dig deep into God's word and you put those pylons down deep in the concrete. And I mean, you just reinforce it and, and then you make it, you make it storm proof. And God is, is wants, he wants that, you know, and if you build a house that way, you don't have to worry. And God's building your house and you're going to stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love all those beautiful hearts and things I'm seeing. I never 
get tired of in this glory. This CD. It activates me. Hallelujah. Well, get your elements ready, the communion, and, and uh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your redemption. We thank you for the hope we have of the resurrection of our bodies and the resurrection of the body. And we're excited at these times that we're in now, the grand finale. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Yeshua said, this is my body broken for you. Take it, eat it. His body was broken. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom was upon him by his stripes. We are healed. Receive the broken body of the Lord. And may he make you every wit whole healed. Hallelujah. Restored, renewed. Be healed. Be healed of trauma. So-called childhood trauma. Be healed of that. Be healed of the heart condition. Be healed of high blood pressure. By God's touching people in their cardiovascular systems right now. Amen. Be healed of the diabetes, the, the blood sugar and the blood pressure. I'm hearing a word of knowledge. Be healed in your bodies, in your circulation. The Lord open up every artery, remove the clogs, Remove the, the cholesterol and all the things blocking, all the blockages. I speak to you in your bloodstream, in your system, to be healed. Uh, yes, the one that had a heart attack and you have been afraid that it would happen again. Lord, I just pray. Yeah, and, and someone that has, uh, no matter what, you, ta you, you take uh, high blood pressure medicine, but it seems like it doesn't have much effect. God is just doing a miracle for you right now. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. He's adding 10 years. God just said a new heart. God is, is yeah. Someone that has a, uh, uh, one of the chambers, no, two, excuse me, two of the chambers of your heart uh, do not, uh, do not circulate it around with enough strength. I don't know the medical word for it, but God, pulmonary, whatever, be healed in your heart right now. Amen. Uh, yes, schizophrenia. You're on a lot of medicine. Lithium, but very high doses because you would have these seizures like grand mal type too. No, no medicine for that and epilepsy go hallelujah you know Jesus never prayed for anybody to get healed he just he just healed them I'm in Yeshua's name I just say be healed he'd say short prayers like <laughs> Rabbi Rick said yesterday in our service uh, 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 well our online he said Jesus never prayed for anybody for healing he just would take authority, he, he took his authority and he just said, uh, stretch out your arm or go or daughter I say unto you, arise, Lazarus, come forth. I'm just commanding healing into your body right now. Be healed in the shoulder, yeah. Be healed of the, uh, 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 yeah. Be healed of joint pain and arthritis in the hands. Be healed. Be healed of the uh, 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 
gosh, somebody, somebody has just been tormented because of guilt. Again, because of an abortion. Oh, and, and yesterday when we, and, and that, but that condemnation, God's forgiven you that. It's over. God has, and you will raise that baby in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't worry. Hallelujah. And it is a, it's a very serious thing. It's murder. But God, Jesus, forgives you, and you're going free of torment. See, the enemy is such a rat. Satan is such a rat. He'll, he'll drive you to do something and then condemn you because you did it. <laughs> you're free. Go free of that. Amen. Yeah, any any injuries or pain in the in the legs uh, or any uh, uh, problems in your legs? Just put your hands on your knees right now or your wherever it's hurting. I command that part of your lower body be healed. Pain go. Uh, feeling be restored. Blood flow as you are created to do again something with the blood uh, it's the uh, uh, something thrombosis Throm I don't know something about the veins or I, I don't know what that is but be healed be healed of that God is doing something in the I see uh, veins and in, in, in whatever that is there's an, someone who has an infection in their blood as well and in your marrow, be healed in the bone marrow. Be healed of leukemia and cancer and, and uh, blood diseases in Yeshua's name. Amen. Well, glory to God. A lot of word of knowledge about the blood today and the heart. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Ore, Peri HaGafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Yeshua said, this is my blood that is shed for you, the blood of the new covenant. This is the new covenant, new testament in my blood. Eat my flesh and drink my blood that my life can be in you. So right now, I believe through my faith that this is the blood of Jesus, the Messiah. Shed for the remission of our sins and ratifying the new covenant and the redemption of all of creation and our bodies. Lord, Anything that's not right in our beings, Lord, we thank you for making it right. Spirit, soul, and body, forgive us, cleanse us, wash us. Let us stand before you because of this blood as if we never had sinned and Adam had never fallen. We are your sons and daughters. Thank you for the precious blood. Yes, this song. Yes. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. The cup, the meal that heals, the meals that the meal that restores. Victory. Lachaim, Lachaim to life. This is the cup of life the ultimate life, the Zoe, new creation, heavenly life, flood into you now and drink all of it. That's why I like to start with it, because I always, man, I, I tell you what, glory. There's a mystery here. I don't quite understand it. I mean, I, I have enough sense to know <coughs> it's not in the ritual. But Jesus said, do it. Oh, it's so important. 
and I just get filled up to the brim. I just feel God's life and grace flood me and be filled with God's grace and resurrection power. Hallelujah. Nothing's impossible if you can believe. All things are possible. You can do all things through Messiah who strengthens you. Hallelujah. Well, let's take our spiritual vitamins. Hallelujah. There's a, two books by James Riddle that God said to, to, to serve to you. Uh, we're going to read a scripture, healing scripture, and we're going and then claim it, confess it, claim it, and then we're going to do that for a financial scripture as well. Praise the Lord. Here's my cup. I lift it up and make me whole. Now, why did this disappear? See, I, you know, you can set it all up and prepare and you think, well, Lord, I know it's here. All right, this is from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. This is a healing promises in his word. It is written, then it shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers, and he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock in the land which the, he swore to your fathers to give you. Now that's every area of wealth in the ancient world that a person could possibly have. You shall be blessed above all peoples there shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but will lay them on all those who hate you. Also, you shall destroy all the peoples whom the Lord your God delivers over to you your eyes shall have no pity on them, nor shall you serve their gods, for that will be a snare to you. Hallelujah. Of course, in the Old Covenant was a, a different different time, and there were natural enemies. Now we fight in the spirit realm because we're new creations. But all our spiritual enemies, they are be crushed under our feet. Glory to God. So... We're going to pray together. I just want you to repeat after me. Say, Abba, Father, in Yeshua's name, I pray and I thank you for our covenant. Thank you for loving me and blessing me and multiplying me. Thank you for causing your anointing to flow through my life so that I have all that I need and more. Hallelujah. Thank you for taking all sickness and all disease away from me so that I can live my life in health and vitality. You are good to me, Father. You know, like the song, like we say, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Al Denson always says that on our Israel trips. I like that. You are good to me, Father. Just say that. I have not earned, nor do I deserve any of these great blessings based on my own merits, but you give them to me freely. Through Yeshua, I am now under your covenant protection. None of the terrible diseases of the world, including Corona 
virus or COVID-19 may cling to me in Yeshua's name. I am made whole in every way. Hallelujah. I declare in faith, I am blessed above all worldly people. There is no one, nor is there anything, who is barren in my house. Hallelujah. Somebody is, yes, God's going to make a fertile myrtle out of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's somebody right now that you've been praying and desiring children, and you haven't been able to have a child, and God is releasing that to you. He's doing a miracle in you. you yes, you can. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. Of course, I'm not prophesying any Virgin Marys here. You have to be married. <laughs> but even that, you know what? God, God's having, someone desires a child maybe, and God will make a way for you to adopt them. I see someone, yes, I see someone that's planning, or you're going, I think it might be a couple, you're going to a, a nation, and you're going to adopt an unwanted child and God's going to make a way and the, the thing that has uh, kept that from there's there's some wicked people trying to stop a couple of people trying to stop that and God just he's, he's, he's just making a way for you right now you're going you're going to you're going to adopt yes you are amen that child is yours so, oh, I was confessing this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Everyone in my house is blessed. We live in God's favor and abound in his prosperity. There is no sickness allowed near my dwelling. The Lord has taken all sickness from me. He does not permit any of the diseases of the world to come upon my household. Instead, they are laid up. They are laid upon my enemies. Hallelujah. Now somebody is kind of going, well, why are you saying that? If, if, well, I know what, what's going on in my life. And well, we call those things that be not as though they were. That's the way the faith of God works. And hallelujah, you have to declare it. You have to say it and believe in your heart. And that's where we can supersede uh, God's will here on earth through our faith. It is simple, but sometimes when it doesn't come immediately, we can get discouraged. But I tell you what, once I pray something, I'm going to hold fast to it. What I mean by that is, you know, hold fast your profession of faith. You have to first receive down on the inside. I taught on this quite a while back about how to receive from God. You know, God answers prayers, but we have to give birth to them also in a way. We, they come down inside of us in seed form and we hold on to it and we give birth. So we need to be fertile, not only with our, uh, you know, physical, uh, our children or whatever, we need to be fertile spiritually and receive answers to prayer. It all starts, everything starts with a seed, everything. Hallelujah. So let's go now to, uh, this is <clears throat> Genesis 28, verses three and four. Notice how many more financial promises there are in the book of Genesis than, than healing and there's so many in the Bible so this is Genesis 28 it's written and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham it all came out of that natural prosperity. All comes out of that covenant of Abraham. All of the blessing of Abraham comes upon the Gentiles through because Jesus bore the curse in our place so we could be blessed. Hallelujah. 
So you just be like a little child right now. Don't, don't, don't analyze and figure out. And you know that. Did you know the Bible calls that unbelief? Just believe. Just say, okay, God said it. That's for me. I receive it. He's a good father, and he loves you, and he wants to bless you. So I pray, Abba Father, in Yeshua's name, I thank you that I recognize that it is you who have blessed me. You make me fruitful in every way and cause me to increase in this earth. My children enjoy the bounty of your abundance. The blessing of Abraham is upon me and all those around me are blessed with me. I declare in faith the Lord blesses me and makes me fruitful. He increases me in his abundance so that the cup of my life overflows with his goodness. In him, I enjoy the very blessing of Abraham. Like Abraham, the Lord makes me rich. Hallelujah. Do you believe this part of the Bible? It's a part of the grace of God. And, uh, and uh, the Lord did say today, uh, we're going to end, uh, I'm supposed to receive, uh, receive the offering. So we're going to do that right now. Hallelujah. And I just want you to go to, uh, I'm going to go in my regular Bible, my, 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 uh, my this Bible. <laughs> and I want, I want to turn to 2 Corinthians. Glory, glory, chapter Hey, this is what turned me around and established me in, in the financial, you know, to provide for me. This, this was a revelation that I heard through Dave Roberson on a back a cassette series. I was living in New York and uh, as a, you know, just, just starting a, you know, I was freelancing and playing solo concerts, and this was the revelation that broke me through into 30 years of God providing for me supernaturally. And I want you to have it. I want you to get this. And I'm not going to take real long, but but I want I want to I just want to give you the the nugget of it because it is so good. It's so good. Hallelujah. So chapter eight. Paul is saying, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God. I want you to notice the word grace in this passage and count how many times it comes. I want you to know about the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality or giving for to their power i bear record yea and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of ministering to the saints or giving to the saints and this they did not as we hoped but first gave their own selves to the lord and unto us by the will of God, insomuch that we desired Titus, as he had begun, so he would finish in you the same grace also. That's two times, okay? Verse 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Now verse 9. I have a love affair with verse 9. Excuse me just a minute. Mm. I love this verse. <laughs> 
Verse 9, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be... Jeez, I almost don't want to say it, maybe. But it's in the Bible, I'm just rich, that you might be rich. Hallelujah. So, what is he saying here? Well, he mentions grace four times, doesn't he? He's talking about a specific grace. The grace that he's talking about is the grace of giving and receiving. And what he say he was receiving an offering for uh, the saints in another area in Macedonia that he had heard about that, but he's taking an offering here. He's receiving an offering for the needs of of the people. So he he uh, uh, he says, "Do you know this grace?" And I want to ask you, do you know this grace? And the grace is, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That you, see, when God redeemed us, we take communion, but when we dream it, he also redeemed us from poverty. Poverty is a curse. You'll never see poverty in heaven. Why? Because it's the absence or lack of, of whatever is needed. But God says, I will provide all your needs. God, heaven is full of riches. It's amazing. It's just full of it. If you don't like it, you probably won't like heaven much. It's extravagant. It's lavish. It's, it's wow. It's beyond anything you've ever... The, the grandest palaces of mankind uh, that they've ever built cannot compare with even just, you know, just a... Uh, they use gold to pave the roads there, you know. And so it's, it's, a, it's a, an opulent place. God is a very wealthy being, and you're his father. The grace is, what is grace? Well, grace is the empowerment, the empowerment and to receive our inheritance while we're on this earth. God's riches at Christ's expense. God has given you access. But he said, do you know this grace? The grace was, what happened to this church, the Corinthian church was, they were in a real financial trial. They were in under enormous pressure, but a spirit of giving came on them and compassion. It says, verse two, even though they were experiencing a, a, a lack, a temporary down, you know, at that time, and, but something supernatural happened when they began to give. And I tell you, the way we access is through giving and receiving, sowing and reaping. The Babylonian system of finance is buying and selling. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Somebody, you know, it's like, uh, you know, when they say, oh, I, I made a really great deal. I, I, I got this for a song and I'm going to sell it for a fortune, you know. Well, somebody lost in that deal, see. But God is all about all about the abundance of giving. So there's a grace of giving. So when you give, always give two things. When you give financially, first of all, worship God. Worship God. Make it an offering of just like you would sing to him. Or you See, in the Old Covenant, they used to bring to the, the Levitical, the, the Levites or the, the temple, they would bring... Uh, you know the first fruits of their crop, or their the best of their uh, their uh, lamb or animals, livestock, and they would bring their best, and they would worship God with it. So, don't ever just don't. In fact, and the other thing is, don't do anything forced or co coercive or out of necessity. He said no, do it joyfully. Yeah, there's no pressure here. I'm I'm I just want to release the grace 
this grace. Do you know this grace? That's what I'm doing. I'm, 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 I want to bless you so that when you do give, you give uh, in such a way that God is released to multiply it and give it back to you where you need it most and where, where it would benefit the most. And that's what God does with tithing. That's what he does with... I wouldn't dream of living my life without tithing the best right off the top. Every, and That's what I do every, every day now. We are sowing every day. And I tell you, you cannot, you, you cannot outgive God. He just, he won't be your debtor. He won't be in debt. He will give it back so much. And that's the system of increase that God has. And we've got to get into this more and more in this midnight hour because I don't think we're going to be able to depend on the world systems like we used to. But God's going to multiply our resources and increase and give us seed to sow. He says he'll give you seed to sow, bread for the eater. He will multiply the seed you've sown and he will, he will uh, multiply your harvest. And so, and he'll, he'll, he'll do all kinds of miracles of multiplication in that whole process. So the first thing, when you give, give in the grace of God. Don't give under a law. Don't give under, well, I got to do this as duty. I better do this. If I don't do this, then, you know. No, it's better not to give until your heart, make sure your heart is right. And you can, you don't give to a person, give to the Lord. That's the second thing, give to the Lord. Worship God, obey, ask him, he'll give you seed to sow. Ask him, what am I to sow today? Or what, I, what, what am I to sow? When the Lord says, receive an offering, that's what he said to me. Uh, I said, yes, sir. So I do that, that's what I'm doing. So this is an obedience, I'm doing this to worship God. Well, you're, you're, no, I divorced that realm a long time ago. I don't live there anymore. I'm really, I just, I just don't, I don't even do that. But I've learned that God will make money your servant if you don't serve it. And you can have as much of it as you can handle. And he'll multiply it and he'll provide for you even in quarantines and even in, He'll do it. He'll, he's amazing. He's not limited. He can do it any way he wants. And he does it all kinds of creative ways. I've never seen such, I, you know, it's just amazing. I've never been without. Not once. That doesn't mean I've had the opportunity to, sometimes he's last minute. I mean, I've seen so many miracles here. I'm absolutely convinced. I know. Why? Because God said, prove me. The only area he said, prove me is in your money. Prove me, I'll show you. And he has. So I'm just giving you that. So worship God. Obey God. Give extravagantly. Give out of love and from the heart. And then, hallelujah. See the harvest by faith. Yeshua said, put your eyes on the harvest. But that's not just harvest of souls. That's the harvest of 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 your giving, whatever it is. You give your time, you give your love, you give your uh, uh, you know, finance, just a part of that. But become a big sower. Say, I'm a big giver, but I'm a bigger receiver. <laughs> so, so, Lord, I ask that you bless the dear ones tonight. And as they sow, Lord, you tell them you would like them to do. And Lord, multiply it a hundred times more. Bring it back on them. Let the plowman overtake the reaper and prosper your people by your grace. For we access this grace. Do you know this grace? The grace of giving and receiving. We access it. <laughs> We access it through our, through our obedience, our worship, our faith, and our giving. So bless the seed and the sower now. And you should.
Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. So, if you want to sow uh, into the Vait Rafa and the broadcast here, uh, and into, you go to Sklar Ministries uh, on my website, and you can go to partner with us, and uh, you can give an ongoing gift, or God's told you a special gift, a special, see, I feel like there are some that need to sow into, into their summer. That's what I feel like, yeah, into their summer. So let God do that. Let, let God wants to increase you. I've noticed this every time, that when God wants to increase me and provide for me, he says, well, what do you have in your house? What, but you, he'll, he'll find, he'll, he'll, he'll say, well, why don't, why don't you, here, why don't you give that? Or maybe, sometimes it's not always been money. Sometimes it's been something, almost always something though that, oh, you know, that's something precious. When you give something from your heart, Oral Roberts used to say that. He says, when the gift moves me, it moves God. In other words, I felt that, oh. And that's when it becomes, it goes into the, as, as a sacrifice into the spirit realm, those are the ones, that, that's, that's good seed, good soil, you know, that's a harvest. So anyway, I'm trying, actually God's trying to help you right now. I'm not trying to pry anything out of you. I'm trying to, you know, I, God wants to provide for you and this is how it happens. This activates the miraculous realm. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your lap, into your life. Hallelujah. Well, Lord bless you today. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray over you now as we say goodbye. Pray over you the Uranic uh, 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 benediction for the dear ones. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I'll do that. Ministering spirits, angels, go forth right now and provide. There's someone in real uh, dire need right now, financially. Lord, I ask for a miracle right now, a miracle, miracles, provision, opportunities, businesses opening, uh, uh, streams and revenues of income coming, new ideas and concepts and wisdom to know what to do right now. One idea has in it all you need. Lord, give the ideas, give and speak to people. Lord, I just pray for angels uh, bringing financial breakthrough right now and increase to the dear ones in Yeshua's mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, upon you and be gracious unto thee. May he, he give you his shalom peace with nothing missing and nothing broken. Lord, you're our shepherd and our provider. I pray the prayer of faith for healing and provision for all who are listening. Cover them now with this wonderful, wonderful glory anointing that's been upon this, upon the Beit Rafa ministry you've given to me, Lord. Bless them abundantly. May they increase more and more. Yes, the Lord just said, uh, your church, there's a pastor watching that uh, you're very concerned about the future of your church. And God is saying, I, I'm, I'm gonna keep them and I'm going to multiply you. You'll come out of this. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Get, but he said, I brought the church See, I've, the church has left the building. <laughs> so when I posted that, it's gone out now. And it's in every home. It's in, you go into your world now. You're the church. You're, you're, we're, all, we're all 
doing our part now. There's a huge multiplication. I'm getting another scripture. You know, in the book of Acts, there was persecution. And it says that the church of Jerusalem was scattered. And what happened? They went everywhere preaching the good news. And so the word of God multiplied. Hallelujah. So God sometimes forces us. There was a book out of the salt shaker into the world, you know. Sometimes God shakes things up so he can get the salt out of the shaker and get it, get the get the church out of out of their out of their little world and into the big world that they're called into. So look for opportunities. Begin to think differently and use Use the, uh, this wonderful technology. Hallelujah. God said, go on, go publish, get out there. He said, I'm giving you free television to the whole world. You know, that, that wasn't possible a few years ago. You know that? This is a wonderful time. We can thank God and rejoice. I'm much more effective now than I used to be. I could, I could minister maybe in sometimes in a big arena maybe maybe we get thousands of people there but you know what every single day i'm able to reach into the nations I mean, i'm getting i'm getting uh emails from you know philippines and and africa and, and uh, south africa and australia and new zealand and and uh, you know alaska i brother up in Wasilla, Alaska, you know, these are, and then they're, South America, you can reach the whole world. So it's how you look at the situation right now. I think church as usual has been turned upside down, at least for now, but I believe we'll get to congregate. We'll get back together for a long time. And I think as we get into the summer, things will uh, I believe the Lord said to me that 90% of what we had before will be back, at least for a time. But uh, what we have to pray for is that the enemy will not steal our liberties that are guaranteed in the Constitution. That must be defended. And we, we will have some resistance. There are forces trying to enslave us and bring in the tribulation right now but not until our job's done no you can't not till the harvest is in all right well i went a little over <laughs> i love you i'll see you tomorrow lord willing and i want to uh i let's believe god that those that have not received the the infilling of the spirit with evidence of tongues and supernatural tongues that tomorrow tomorrow night's your night and we're going to pray together and i believe the holy spirit will just like it said in the book of acts will fall from heaven and hallelujah and you'll speak in a brand new language of love they were all filled all filled and they spoke in a language a language of love a new language new languages of the love of God, supernatural prayer, perfect prayer, and power, power. They receive, you shall receive power and authority when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and fills you. Now, if you're born again, hallelujah, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, but let it God's going to fill you like a balloon. Wow, somebody's receiving right now. <laughs> yes, be filled. Someone right now, just as I say, well, see, hunger has a way of doing that. So I've got to go tonight, and uh, uh, I love you. I always feel better when I end than when I start, always. And uh, now remember, uh, uh, I, my goal is between 10 and 11, and I usually do uh, here on the on uh, the west coast california i, I will uh, i'll be praying for you and i lift up everyone who posts and in your name and if you have a prayer request i'll agree with you and i just i have enough uh, i just believe that god hears and answers simple prayers 
childlike prayers. And that's, I just believe and agree that it's done. And then I don't back away from it. Once I agree, I don't, that's it. Not negotiable anymore. So you come into agreement with me and what is the Bible? Jesus said, if two of you agree, and we have a, we have a few others that are going through praying with me too, because you we got quite a few intercessors. I know it, I know it, and I can feel it. Sometimes God will show me the person praying, praying for me. Thank God, your prayers are helping me. Oh yeah, hallelujah. It's hard to say. It's always hard to say goodbye. Um, well, I mean, if I keep and like I said, if I keep getting the interest and response, I will keep going every day. You know, and if, if there's a waning, I understand, but I, I just feel like we just need this daily encouragement. And I'll go as long as God said. He hadn't told me other than uh, go, yes, today, do it again, do it again. <laughs> yes. So each day, and then I say, well, what do you want me to do today? And then he tells me. He'll give me the outline. And sometimes I think I get the outline, and then, like, when I saw that vision yesterday, I, I, I got, I was so overwhelmed uh, at the God's broken heart over these poor, oh, these, these the blood, the innocence. I, I, I was done in, I, and so I couldn't really keep with any much of a program. I could just say, you know, let's, we have to get right with God, you know, that's so. All right, I'm going to say good night now, and uh, I read every one, and I pray, I take time, I read every one, and I, and I recognize many of your names, and please, it, it, I, I believe God, and, and tell me, because I believe there's been answers to prayers. You need to, to, let, uh, test, to tell, tell what good things God's done, and thank Him, and I will rejoice with you. That encourages me, too, because I'm, I'm out there in faith just like you, see? So, he's a prayer answering father. God always hears and he always answers. And I believe, I believe I receive when I pray. Glory to God. And that's why I have. If you will believe you receive when you pray, Mark 11, 23, and 24, you speak to the mountain, believe. When you pray, believe you receive. What happens? Then you'll have. <laughs> when you get it, right when you pray, and then you just hold on to it. I got it. I'm not going to let go. That's when you believe and you hold on to it, you got it. Once you got it, then you get it. Okay? <laughs> you got it? Good. All right. Love you. Shalom, shalom. Good night.